So last time we were having a look at confidence intervals, we had a look at the large samples where we had a known or unknown population standard deviation and we also had a look at a small sample known population standard deviation. So in this video we're going to be having a look at the last of these which is where we have an unknown population standard deviation and we have a small sample size. So we are looking at a small sample unknown standard deviation. So if we have only a small sample and we do not have the standard deviation of the population, then we must use a different test in order to find the confidence interval for the mean. This is called the student t-test. Uh, we use this when the data is a random sample from a normal distributed population but we do not know the standard deviation of the population. So here we have an example. So we have a random sample of patients who had been treated by a casualty department in a large hospital, were asked to state how long they had waited before seeing a doctor. And we have their replies here. And we're assuming that the data follows a normal distribution, calculate a 90% confidence interval for the mean waiting time. So, and we're told here that it's a random sample, and we're told here that it's normally distributed. So those two things that we were just talking about have been met. So in order to do this, we do need to find out the mean and the sample standard deviation of this data that we have here. So it is slightly different to what we looked at before. So we've got 12, 109, 35, 63, 54, 72, and 10. And as always, just double check that you have typed everything in correctly. Then we're going to calc check that our set is list 1 1 because we don't have any frequencies and then we go into one variable so this time we are wanting to write down the mean of our sample which is 50.7142857 and as i explained in the previous video because we are not wanting to end up with any rounding errors in our confidence interval we do want to keep our mean and sample standard deviation to as much degree of accuracy as we can for now. So remember as well that the sample standard deviation is this SX symbol here. So our sample standard deviation is 35.1554371 and the number of pieces of data that we have is seven. Now a nice thing in our graphical calculator is that we can just put that information in here and it will give us our confidence interval. So this time we want to go into intra, which is this bit here. We want to go to T and then one sample. So the C level is our confidence level. So I'm just going to write down what, where I went then. So in the stat part of our calculator, we went into intra, T, and then one sample, just to remind you how we get to this part of our calculator. So the C level is our confidence level. In this case, our confidence interval is 90, so we want 0 0.9. The mean from our sample, our X bar, is 50.7142857. Our standard deviation is 35 point one five five four three seven one and our n is seven and please notice there i didn't use central limit theorem or anything like that because that doesn't apply here we are just using uh, the information that we have uh, and the calculator is going to do it for us so we're going to exe exe and there we go so 90 percent of the means of our samples are going to be between 24.894173 
and 76.5343841. And again, you can check that the information there is correct for what we had. Sorry, I've put one too many fives in there, haven't I? Sorry, these are going to change the numbers slightly. Twenty-four point eight nine four two. So it's a good job that they show them there, just so that you could double check that you have typed things in correctly. I'm going to show you another thing in a second, which is another way that you can do this. So eight nine four two six five six and seventy six point five three four three zero five eight. So if I just go back a step, and maybe your calculator already has this, if we go up to data, because we have actually typed the data into our calculator, instead of typing in the variables, we can just tell it to have a look at the list. And we can tell it to have a look at list one, which is where we put our data. And again, we don't have any frequencies here, so we can just make that into a one. And when we click XE again, we should have exactly the same numbers. Five three four three zero five. So it's only the last decimal place, which is slightly different, and that's because it's using an even more exact version of the standard deviation and the mean. So from that, we can do a little bit of rounding. So I am going to keep that on variable for now, because when we are just typing the values into our calculator or if you're coming back to check it at the end of the exam, you won't already have the values typed into your calculator as we did then. So we're going to do a bit of rounding here, which is going to give us 24.9 and 76.5, each of them to three significant figures. So then for part B, we've got the receptionist claims that the mean waiting time is 15 minutes. Comment on her claim. While 15 minutes is below the lower bound of our confidence interval, so she is unlikely to be correct. So as 15 minutes is below the lower bound of our 90% confidence interval, It is unlikely that she is correct. And you can even put a comment saying people seem to be waiting longer based on our 90% confidence interval. So now we're going to have a look at another example. So we have a machine produces plastic boxes for compact discs. The width of the compact of the discs follows normal distribution. A random sample of six boxes from a particular day's production are measured and found to have the following widths. Again, we have normally distributed, we have a random sample, we have a small sample, we have no mention of the population standard deviation, which is how we know that it's a T-confidence interval that we are going to have to do. So remember to get into this bit, we're going to intra T1 sample. Our C level is 0.95. We need to find the mean of our sample. So we need to delete the data that we already have in there. We have 118.24, 118.27, 118.35, 118.21, 118.29, and 118.26. Now, just noting there, all of these values start off with 118. So it is very, very 
important that we do not turn to three significant figures in this case because it's likely that my confidence interval then would just give me two of the same number. So we're going to calc one var. You can check your set, but we know that that's correct from the last question. It needs to say list one one. So the mean from our sample is 118.27. The sample standard deviation from our sample is 0 0.047749334. And our N is 6. So then we want to go back. Intra T1 sample. As I said before, our C level is 0 0.95. The mean from our sample is 118.27. Our sample standard deviation is 0 0.0477. Uh, and our n is 6. There we go. So that gives us that 95% of the means are going to lie between 118. 2.1989 and 118.32011. And if in this question it asked me to round to an appropriate degree of accuracy, I would probably go for two decimal places just because two decimal places was used for each of the piece of data that we were given in the question. So in terms of the assumptions that go along with this, we have just talked about them, but here it states them clearly that the sample that is taken has to be a random sample. And in the same way as we had for the small sample uh, known population standard deviation, we still need the population to be normally distributed. So I would now like you to pause the video and give the two now you try questions a go. So hopefully you paused the video and gave the two now you try questions a go. So for this first now you try, we have 10 students independently perform an experiment to estimate the value of pi. Their results were, and we have their values there. State any necessary assumptions that you make. Calculate a 95% confidence interval for pi based on the data given. Uh, the confidence interval correct to two decimal places. So here... The assumptions that we are having to make is that the students must be a random sample and that all estimates for pi must be normally distributed. Uh, when we put the data into our calculator, we end up with a mean of 3.109, a sample standard deviation of 0 0.1950851 and an N of 10, which means that our 95% confidence interval, which you can see there, and it specifically tells us to round it to two decimal places, which gives us 2.97 to 3.25. In part B, we're asked is pi, which is 3.14 to two decimal places, contained in the confidence interval and use this to comment on the accuracy of the experiment. Well, we can see there that 3.14 is indeed inside our confidence interval. So yes, pi is contained within the confidence interval, which does mean that the experiment is probably accurate. And again, make sure you don't make any definitive statements because we can only go off the data that we are given to draw a conclusion. We don't have everybody's estimates in order to tell how accurate they are. And maybe if we did take another sample and found a confidence interval around that, maybe pi would then not be within the confidence interval. So we have to be careful on the wording and make sure that we just say probably accurate. For the second question, we have the quality of milk in a bottle, maybe, it, sorry, the quantity of milk in a bottle, maybe assumed to be normally distributed, a random sample of 16 bottles is taken and the quantity of milk is measured with, for the, with the following results in millilitres. And again, just in that first line, we have that the population is normally distributed and we have that the small sample that we have taken is a random sample. And we're then asked to find a 99% confidence interval for the mean quantity of milk in a bottle and again giving the answer to two decimal places. Putting those values into our calculator, we get a mean of 1,002.1875. We get a sample standard deviation of 3.56312129. And we do have 16 values there. So our N is 16. 
which means that the 99% of our means are going to lie between those two values there. And again, rounding those to two decimal places gives us 1,000.29 millilitres and 1,004.09 millilitres. This question does go on to the next page. So for part B, we are asked how would the validity of the test change if it turned out that the sample was not random? Well, regardless of the size of the sample, we still need the sample to be a random sample. And we have talked about that previously. So this would invalidate the result as the sample needs to be a random sample. For part two, if the quantity of milk in the bottles was not normally distributed, well, in this case, this would also invalidate the result as the sample is small. The population has to be normally distributed for the means of the samples to be normally distributed. And this is due to central limit theorem again, that we talked about when we were doing the normal confidence intervals and in AS. In part C, we're asked, is there a simple way to either the circumstances discussed in part B? If so, what is it? Well, with I, it has to be a random sample regardless of the sample size. There is no way to get around that. The only thing that we could do is maybe say take another sample and make sure that this time it is a random sample. But the main one that we can improve upon is part two. Uh, if we know that the population is not normally distributed, then we can make sure that we are taking a large sample, which eliminates that need for the population to be normally distributed. So you need to be careful when you are doing the T confidence intervals because the calculator automatically uses the fact that we are giving it the sample size. And we will go over this a little bit more as to why we enter the sample mean and the sample standard deviation and the N separately in the way that we do when we have a look at the single sample T hypothesis tests that we come on to later. For now, it's very important to remember that when you are doing a normal confidence interval, you still have to do the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. But when you are doing a T confidence interval, you enter in the sample standard deviation and the N separately. And remember to get to this part of the calculator, you go into inter, T one sample. Next time we're going to have a look at critical regions as these are the parts that are not contained within confidence intervals. Thank you very much for listening.